Hello everyone, welcome to Dental Media YouTube channel. Here you can learn basic and advanced topics in dentistry. In this video, you will learn about various structures in enamel. Before starting, please subscribe our YouTube channel and hit the bell icon to get latest updates. Let's get started. Hunter-Schrieger bands. These are alternating dark and light bands which are best visualized in longitudinal ground section under oblique reflected light, ITIS produced solely by changes in the rod direction. They run perpendicular to the striae of Rhetius. The light bands are referred to as Diaz ones and the dark bands are called as parazones. The angle between the Diaz ones and parazones is approximately of 40 degrees. These bands originate at the dentino enamel border and pass outward, ending at some distance from the outer enamel surface. A number of possible explanations are given for the appearance of these bands. The following are some of them. 1. Most of the workers consider that these bands occur due to change in the direction of rods. That is one group of rods extends toward the surface with a mesial drift while, the adjacent group might show a distal drift. 2. According to some workers, they are composed of a slightly different content of organic material. 3. They may occur due to differences in permeability. Incremental lines of Rhetius. These are rhythmic successive apposition of layers of enamel. During formation of the crown. When a ground section of a tooth is seen under a light microscope, Concentric brown lines are seen in the enamel. These are called incremental lines of Rhetius or striae of Rhetius. In longitudinal sections, the lines traverse the cusp and incisor area in a symmetrical arc pattern, descending obliquely to the dentino enamel junction. In the cervical part of the crown, they run obliquely. They deviate occlusally from dentino enamel junction to the surface. When these circles are incomplete at the enamel surface, a series of alternative grooves, which are called the imbrication lines of picareal, are formed. The elevations between the grooves are called parachymata. A number of possible explanations have been put forward to explain the formation of these lines. 1. According to some workers these lines represent a hypomineralized or rhythmic formation of the enamel. Two periodic bending of the enamel rods, variations in the basic organic structure or in a physiological calcification rhythm could be another possible reason for these lines. 3. The occurrence of a few incremental lines, striae, is considered normal, but when they are present in great number or as a broad band it indicates periods of metabolic disturbance or disturbance in amelogenesis. Parachymata Parachymata are wave-like, transverse grooves. They are shallow furrows and most probably the external manifestation of incremental lines of Rhetius. They are continuous around a tooth and usually lie parallel to each other and to the cementoenamel junction. Usually there are 30 parachymata per millimeter in cementoenamel junction and 10 parachymata near the occlusal or incisal region of a tooth. Parachymata are absent in the prenatal occlusal parts of the deciduous teeth. They are present in the postnatal cervical parts of the deciduous teeth. In prenatal period, there is undisturbed supply of nutrients even at the cost of mother's health, hence they are absent in the prenatal period. Structureless Outer Enamel Layer there is a structureless outer layer of enamel about 30 microns thick found most commonly towards the cervical area and less often on cusp tips. This structureless layer is called prismless enamel and found in all deciduous teeth and in 70% of the permanent teeth. Enamel Rod Ends The enamel rod ends are concave and vary in depth and shape. They may contribute to the adherence of plaque material with a resultant caries attack especially in young people. Enamel lamellae Enamel lamellae are very thin, leaf-like structures, sometimes visible to naked eye. 
They extend from the enamel surface towards the dentino-enamel junction, rarely extending into dentin. The enamel lamellae contain mostly organic material. Enamel lamellae can be differentiated into three types. Type A. Lamellae composed of poorly calcified rod segment. Type B. Lamellae composed of degenerated cells. Type C. Lamellae arising in erupted teeth where the cracks are filled with organic matter and debris from saliva. Type A is restricted to enamel and type B and C may reach the dentin. They may form a road for entry of bacteria that may initiate caries. Cracks Originally the term crack was used to describe the very narrow, fissure-like structures that are present on almost all surfaces, they are actually the outer edges of enamel lamellae. They originate from dentino-enamel junction and run at right angles to it. Neonatal line or ring In deciduous teeth, the enamel develops partly before and partly after birth. The line or boundary between the two portions of enamel in deciduous teeth is known as neonatal line or neonatal ring. It appears due to the abrupt change in the environment and nutrition of the newborn, infants. It is an accentuated incremental line of rhesus. Nas Smith's membrane, primary enamel cuticle. Nas Smith's membrane is a non-mineralized usually found between the epithelium of dentogingival junction and the enamel surface. It is formed by an accumulation of basal lamina material produced by the junctional epithelium of the dentogingival junction. Enamel is incapable of repairing itself once it is destroyed because the ameloblast cell degenerates following the formation of the enamel rod. The final act of the ameloblast cell is secretion of a layer covering the end of the enamel rod. This layer is referred to as the Nas Smith's membrane, named after its first reporter, or the primary enamel cuticle. This delicate membrane covers the entire enamel of newly erupted tooth and is worn away by mastication and cleaning. The secondary cuticle is known as dental cuticle. It covers enamel and a part of cementum. This is about 10 microns in thickness. Pellicle, salivary pellicle. After tooth is cleaned, Salivary proteins and glycoproteins having strong affinity for enamel get adsorbed to the enamel surface very quickly and form a very thin layer called the salivary pellicle. Enamel tufts Enamel tufts are hypocalcift enamel rods and interprismatic substance that originates at the dentino enamel junction and extends into enamel for about one-third to one-fifth of its total thickness, developmentally they are formed due to the abrupt change in the direction of rod. Dentino-enamel junction The dentino-enamel junction is established as soon as the two hard tissues enamel and dentin begin to form. The dentino-enamel junction is a scalloped interface between the enamel and dentin. Dentin has pitted surface, which supports the enamel. Small curved projections of enamel fit into small concavities of the dentin. This relationship assures the firm hold and increased adherence of the enamel cap on the dentin. The surface of the dentin at the dentino enamel junction is pitted and convexities of the scallops are directed towards the dentin. The dentino enamel junction is a hypermineralized zone that is about 30 microns thick. Enamel spindles odontoblastic processes sometimes cross the dentino enamel junction and get entrapped in the enamel matrix. Since mostly they are thickened at their end they have been termed as enamel spindles. They may serve as pain receptors, thereby explaining the enamel sensitivity experienced by some patients during cavity preparation. The direction of the odontoblast processes and spindles in the enamel corresponds to the original direction of the ameloblasts and is at right angles to the surface of the dentino enamel junction. Gnarled enamel the enamel rods at the cuspal and incisal region appear intertwined, twisted, and intertwisted, and are more irregular. Such kind of optical appearance of enamel is called as gnarled enamel. They are more so at the cuspal region than incisal region. 
Gnarled enamel aids in resisting the high masticatory loads without fracture that the cusps have to bear. Enamel droplets or enamel pearls. Occasionally, the cells of the epithelial root sheath remain adherent to the dentin surface. They may differentiate into functioning ameloblasts and form small round islands of enamel. Such droplets of enamel are called enamel pearls. They may be found near or in the bifurcation or trifurcation of the roots of permanent molars. So we have covered Part 1 Enamel Introduction and its physical and chemical properties, Part 2 Structure of Enamel, Part 3 Various Structures in Enamel, you can find links in description. If you find our videos interesting then please subscribe our channel and hit the bell icon to get latest updates. Thank you for watching.